Lisa Lindsay on behalf of the people of the state of Michigan. Good morning. Uh, we do have a precinct report. Uh, any changes to the guidelines? There are changes to the guidelines, Your Honor, many of which we have agreed upon. All right, let's address the ones you agree on. Just for the record, uh, the guidelines that scored by the probation department are on the minimum end 365 to 600 months, uh, and they scored uh, the defendant as a F3 total PRV points of 120 offense variable points of 200. What are the variables that the parties agree on? Uh, we agree on OV1. The, I think it would be easier to say the one just the we changes. Don't agree on. So why can't we? We need to oh. put the changes on the record. Right, yes. Let's, let's do it this way. Okay. okay. With regard to prior record variables, those are accurate. Those are all correct. Yes. Yes. With regard to offense variable one, the probation department has scored it as 25 points. That's accurate. Correct. Offense variable two, 15 points. It should be. It should be five. Your position is five. Yes, we agree. We agree that it should be five. All right. Probation department is scored as 15 points. The parties agree it should be five points. And that deals with the lethal potential of a weapon possessed or used. And here, that weapon was a knife or other cutting or stabbing instrument. Therefore, five points will be scored for OB2. Correct. OB3 is scored by the probation department as zero. Uh, I believe it should be scored as 25. What's your position? Take, can you uh, ref I don't have my guide life, book. It deals with life-threatening or incapacitating injury. That, okay. that, that is correct. I did discuss it with Ms. Lindsay. I also agree that OV3 should be 25. Correct. Under People versus Houston. That's correct. 473 Mish, 399. 25 points to be scored for offense variable 3. Offense variable 4 is scored by probation department 0. That's correct. correct. Offense variable 5 is 15. Correct. Correct. Offense variable 6 has been scored as 10 points. I believe it should be scored as 25, Your Honor. I, the, I believe that as it relates to the count involving uh, Heidi, it should be 10. And I do agree that as it relates to uh, the child, it should be 25. Uh, Your Honor, there's nothing to support uh, 10 points being scored for Heidi Walker. When the defendant pled, he indicated he stabbed her two times in the neck. And uh, in uh, the pre-sentence report, he indicated he stabbed her two times in the neck. And neither of the defendant's recitation of the facts did he indicate that there was any hot blood or anything of that nature. And the testimony, the preliminary examination, did not support any type of uh, hot blood. As a matter of fact, the testimony at the preliminary examination was he told uh, a family member that he stabbed her because she got on his nerves. So I believe 25 points is the accurate scoring for that. During the course of an argument, so because there was no testimony about it, I mean, he pled guilty. He admitted to the actions that he took that caused death. However, there was no inquiry made as to any surrounding uh, activity. It's our position that um, the uh, stabbing of Heidi uh, occurred during the course of an argument and therefore should be 10. However, we do agree that it should be 25 as it relates to Savannah. Offense variable 6 is to be scored at 25 points if the crime being scored is a crime against the person, of course, this is, and the offender had an unpremeditated intent to kill, had the intent to do great bodily harm or create a very high risk of death or great bodily harm, knowing that death or great bodily harm was the probable result. Uh, the defense is objecting uh, to 25 points and thinks it should be 10 points, at least as to one of the complaints. <clears throat> uh, the court recalls the plea. Uh, the defendant did uh, admit during the plea that he stabbed the complainant twice. The element of uh, second degree murder dealing with the intent to kill, the intent to do great bodily harm, or create a very high risk of death or great bodily harm, knowing that such death or great bodily harm was the probable result is in fact an element of second degree murder. Uh, the court accepted the plea. The parties agreed that factual basis with regard to both complainants was made as to second degree murder. Therefore, 25 points is properly scored for OV6 as to both complainants. 
As to OV7, uh, we both agree that it should be zero. Correct. It is for 50 points. I have the same question. OV8 is 15 points? Yes. Yes. OV9 is 10 points? Uh, no, OV9 is 100 points because there were, in a homicide case, if there's multiple deaths, it's a, scored as 100 points. I, I believe that's what the practice note says. I believe that would be accurate, although I find it a bit confusing considering there's two counts. Under uh, offense variable 9, 100 points is to be scored when multiple deaths occur in a homicide case here. Uh, the defendant pledged two counts of second degree murder. Therefore, 100 points to be scored for OB9. As to OV12, we both... Oh, OV10 is scored at 10 points? Oh, yeah, that's it, correct. It's scored 10 points. It should be scored as 10 points for uh, Savannah Walker, zero points for Heidi Walker. All right, so for, for purposes of this guideline score, we are uh, going to score 10 points uh, for the complaint of Savannah Walker. Correct. All right, so OV10 will continue to be 10 points. OV11 has been scored by the probation department at zero. That's accurate. OV12, 25 points. That should be zero. We agree it's zero. <coughs> OV12 deals with contemporaneous felonious criminal acts. The parties agree it should be zero points. Yes, it because it scored at zero points. Go ahead. Because if you score 13, you can't score 12, but we have scored 13 at 25 points. That's correct. 13 point, I'm sorry, offense variable 13 will remain at 25 points. OB 14 is scored at zero. Correct. Correct. OB 16 is scored at zero. Correct. 17 scored at zero. Correct. OB 18 is zero. Correct. OB 19 at zero. Your Honor, I believe that it should be scored at 15 points. There was testimony at the preliminary examination from the witness, our gentry. Uh, Hamilton, that when he was in the county jail and he saw the defendant in the county jail, the defendant uh, threatened to kill him. There was also testimony from Coleman Gibson, a witness who indicated that the defendant said that he, that the defendant said he wished to kill our gentry because our gentry uh, told the police uh, what he had said about killing Savannah. But those statements were made after the homicide, in fact, uh, not even on the same day as the homicide, is that correct? They were made when he, after... The statement that was made to our gentry was made after the homicide when he was arrested and they were both in the county jail. And this um, variable deals with a threat to a penal institution. It actually is listed um, under the administration of justice and the threat to a witness does in fact impact the administration of justice. If the court looks at OB-19, my concern is, is that the sentencing offense is second, two counts of second degree murder and arson. Yes. You're asking me to score uh, under OB 19 are yes. actions or acts by the defendant made after that crime had been committed. Yes, but if you read the instructions and you read uh, the offender used force or the threat of force against another person or property or another person to interfere with or attempt to interfere with the administration of justice. <laughs> it's, it's right on point. I agree with the court's assessment and the probation department's assessment and believe it should be scored at zero. It doesn't change guidelines. It doesn't change the guideline range in any way. I believe it should be scored at well, zero. If the, if the court reads a threat to the security of a penal institution or court, obviously those things only come into play after the crime itself has been committed. Well, not necessarily. Um, so if the defendant attempted to escape from the Wayne County Jail yesterday, should I score 15 points for OB-19? <coughs> no. He'd be charged with another crime. But that's not the situation we have here. I, in terms I understand, of but the proximity between the act of the defendant and the crime. And uh, I'm asking you with regard, does it matter? So if the defendant attempted well, to escape I think, yesterday. I think it, it's, it's on a case-by-case -case basis. I think you have to look at the facts 
of the individual case. I mean, nothing can be blanket, but it deals with him threatening a witness. I agree with the uh, assessment by the probation department. OB 19 is scored at zero. OB 20 is also scored at zero, is that correct? That's yeah. correct. The total of these, I believe, then come to 230. Is that correct? Yes. And it does not change the guideline minimum range. That is correct. It remains at 365 to 600 or life. Correct. All right. Any uh, changes to the body report? No, Your Honor. The pre-sentence report was accurate. Uh, I would indicate, however, I'm a little disappointed that the probation department didn't uh, flesh out by contacting the uh, director of nurses at the Wayne County Jail, the defendant's uh, indication that while he was in the Wayne County Jail, he had been diagnosed as bipolar. It looks like they made an attempt to contact the nurse, and nobody answered, so they just left it alone. What, what page is that? I'm looking at page 10. bottom of page 10 under mental health. Unless there's any objection on tending to add the following sentence to the end of that paragraph, the bottom of page 10. At sentencing, uh, defendant's attorney stated that defendant was diagnosed as bipolar in the Wayne County Jail. Uh, I have no problem with the court adding that. If the court would add, there were medical records, and, and I can assert to the court that after the defendant was arrested, there was either a slash either suicide attempt and or gesture to which he was taken to the uh, Detroit Receiving Hospital and th those medical records do not, when they were giving anything about a psychiatric history from the defendant, did not list anything in terms of um, other than him saying that he uh, was feeling suicidal. It did not list any type of significant mental health history and it, I believe it's only after he was returned to the county jail that the supposed diagnosis of bipolar um, disorder was supposedly made. I, 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 thank you, Judge. I'm not even sure I understand what Ms. Lindsay's talking about. But, but in any any other uh, changes to the pre report? No, Your Honor. Anything on behalf of the people with regard to the body of the report? Nothing, Your Honor. Uh, with regard to sentencing? Your Honor, there was a sentence agreement that was entered into between the defense and the prosecution. Uh, my client and I wish the court to adopt that uh, agreement and sentence him accordingly. Uh, Ms. Lindsay, are there any family members who would like to address the court? Yes, there are. Hallie Couchy, it's C A U C H I. Can you move over this way, Mr. Hightower, towards me? I'd like you to direct your comments to me. Um, are there any, what are, what are the things you'd like me to know uh, in terms of sentencing? I just, you know, this has been really tragic to our family. And they didn't deserve it. No one deserves this. What happened to them? And I just want to make sure that he's held accountable for what he did. I mean, there's not really much more, I, you know. And I'm not sure you, you mentioned this. What, what is your name? Holly Couchy. I'm the sister and the aunt. Thank you. Thank you. Is there, are there any other 
any other members of the family would like to address the board? No, there, there was a, a, a letter sent by the victim's daughter. I don't know whether the court received it uh, as of yet, but when the court receives it, I'd like it to be attached to the file. I have not received that letter, but when it is received, it will be put into the court file. Thank you. Certainly the defense should receive a copy of that as well? Yes. Because I have not seen it. Okay. No, neither have I, but when it's received, you'll receive a copy. Thank you, Judge. Um, Ms. Lindsay, in terms of sentencing? The court, I would wish the court to follow the sentence agreement of 50 to 75 for two counts of, of murder in the second degree and the 6 to 10 on the arson. And all of those counts, of course, were to run concurrent. Correct. And the habitual offender notice was to be dismissed. That's correct. As well as counts 3, 4, and 5. Correct. Correct. So, Mr. Hightower, uh, you have an absolute right uh, to address the court, uh, to let me or anyone else know uh, what I should know before I pass sentence. Is there anything you'd like me to know? <coughs> yes, I have something I would like to say. I want to use my case to make people aware that I believe if I had a psychological evaluation before I was released from serving a long-term prison sentence, my recent diagnosis of bipolar disorder wouldn't have gone unchecked, unevaluated, and unmedicated. And with the right medication and treatment for my problems, these crimes may have been prevented. However, I accept full responsibility for my crimes. Um, I want to address the victim's family. I would like to sincerely apologize. I hope someday, Holly, you will find it in your heart to forgive me. And Amanda, um, That's all. I ask the court also to forgive me. And I ask for forgiveness from God and also my family. Thank you. Let's proceed to post sentencing. In terms of sentencing, you may choose to do so file an appeal to the District Court of Appeals. Any appeal will be by leave, not by right. If eligible, you can have court appointed attorney represent you in that appeal, but any appeal would need to be filed within 42 days of the early state. In terms of your sentence, also the form that is either now or will soon be in front of you, uh, set aside your appellate rights and ask you to sign the form acknowledging you understand your appellate rights, if you do. Oh, do you want us to do that yeah. now? This is uh, your appellate rights. If you want to your so you should sign that. Gives you some direction on how to. This is the copy that you're going to get. Okay. 
We acknowledge receipt, Judge. My client has signed it. In terms of uh, restitution, Ms. Lindsay, do you have a restitution figure? No, I have, don't have any uh, receipts or anything in front of me. Right. In terms of sentencing, I will sentence you to the agreed of well, I will sentence you to include $204 in state costs, $130 in crime victim assessment, $1,200 in court costs, $400 in attorney fees, and restitution to be determined by the Michigan Department of Corrections. In terms of your sentence, I will sentence you to the agreed upon 50 years to 75 years in the Michigan Department of Corrections, uh, also on both count one and two, and uh, the agreed upon six years to 10 years in the Michigan Department of Corrections for the arson case. These counts will run concurrent with each other. And I understand that people are moving to dismiss counts three, four, five, as well as additional offenders. Yes, Your Honor. Those are dismissed and withdrawn. That concludes the sentencing. Thank you, Your Honor.